Everybody, welcome back. I'm Yumble, and this is a diamond interchange. My previous video was all about diamond interchanges and a few of its variants, including the diverging diamond and the single point urban interchange. It's a service interchange for getting cars on and off of the highway while allowing the highway to remain uninhibited using a bridge. Today, I would like to introduce loops to the equation. If you have space in your city and would like to make a more capable interchange, or if you just want to add some tools to your interchange or road building arsenal, loops may be for you. You may be wondering, what are loops? I can think of no better example than a cloverleaf interchange. Now this interchange has four loops in total. And the cloverleaf is, in this case, is serving the same purpose as our diamond interchange. It just does it a little differently. The purpose being to get cars on and off of the highway or transitioning between a major freeway or highway and a smaller local road. Now the loops do this by allowing the traffic to go under the bridge in this example, change lanes, make a right hand turn along this loop, and they have effectively just made a left turn when they come out on the other side here. So coming from south to north, if you go past, make the loop, you've just made a left without having to cross over the traffic on this east-west road. Whereas the diamond has you taking this ramp here and connecting up here somewhere and making a left across traffic, the loop's power lies in its ability to go under or over the other road and then double back on itself, netting you a left-hand turn by turning right. So now that you've seen the principle of the loop in context, I wanna show you some other places where it can be useful. This is a service interchange called the partial cloverleaf. This is the a B4 variant. I've got videos describing the different versions of the partial cloverleaf, but the upper right and lower left quadrant here have loops and that's great. You get those two left turns, you get the benefit of a very conflict-free left turn for the north and south traffic coming from the highway, and you wind up with a two-phase light in this configuration. So the light just bounces back and forth between two different states. So that's a very, very clean solution. You'll also notice that most of this design is grounded. Grounded meaning the roads are built on the ground. So that's part of the magic of the loop as well. The cloverleaf example had a similar scheme going on where the roads are all grounded, they are not elevated. It's much cheaper in real life to build something like this. So in game, if you're looking to get a more realistic result uh, out of your builds and you're looking to, to build for realism, keeping as much of the build on the ground works to your advantage. So that's a, that I sign off on this fully. That's honestly the, the end game of the service interchange, in my opinion, that is the, for service interchanges specifically, this is the top dog. This is a, a parklow, partial cloverleaf. But let's let's combine stuff. Let's let's throw some stuff together, and we'll make some some soup out of it. <laughs> you can take that same concept of the loops of the B parklow and throw roundabouts on the end. You can do this with the diamond as well. I still think it's a diamond. Um, it's a diamond dog bone. If you do roundabouts on a diamond, I would call this a roundabout parklow or a roundabout partial cloverleaf but instead of the presumably lighted intersections or signalized intersections of this configuration that I usually use, you can put in roundabouts. There will be a capacity hit to the interchange. So on the bright side, you won't have to use lights. Uh, you won't have to set up the traffic lights and traffic manager. That's great, but you will take a hit on overall capacity and volume of the interchange. Just so you know, if you choose to use roundabouts in that situation, you will. It is a bit of a downgrade in terms of capacity. But if you don't have capacity needs that are overwhelming, feel free to use roundabouts instead and it's it's free flowing. It does its things. Car, cars just have to yield um, as a result. So feel free to blend in roundabouts in all of these configurations that I've mentioned. Plus, the <laughs> in this case, the loops have snuck their way into the, the realm of the system interchange, which we haven't even touched on yet in this video. A system interchange is addressing one highway crossing another and wanting to connect the two in a free-flowing manner. So system interchanges have to be free-flowing. They are specifically for connecting one highway to a crossing highway, uh, as opposed to a service interchange, which is a smaller road that can support conflict. 
to a free-flowing highway or freeway. This is two highways. And you can see instead of instead of a conflict a conflicted left turn like here, you use flyovers instead. This is a clover stack. Some call it a clover turbine. Um, I've always seen it called a clover stack. Um, but yeah, so instead you wind up with your left turns handled by loops in, in opposing diagonal quadrants, and then you get a flyover, so your right turn lane can kind of turn into a flyover, and then under, and then on the road. So the loops are useful everywhere, and their primary draw, the, I, I would boil it down to two things in this segment. Two, the two takeaways are that loops are for turning left without crossing traffic in both directions. So you get under the bridge, and you make a left without crossing over the, the crossroads traffic. The other draw to the loop is that it can be largely grounded. This one is elevated like unnecessarily. That's how it is in the workshop. It's mine, I did it, whatever. But uh, that that rings true all around where the, the, the loop can remain grounded and you can just consolidate everything into one overpass in the case of all of these service interchanges. So loops are a great alternative to your typical diamond intersection over here, diamond interchange, but they are more space consuming as the loop protrudes out a little bit more than these ramps do in the diamond. Now that we've spoken about the loop at length, I want to show you where it might go in this interchange. What you're really going to be looking for in your city is a backup of a left-hand turn. So I'm using right-hand traffic, so the left-hand turns are where the conflict are. Reverse that if you are in places uh, building a city where traffic drives on the left, um, then it would be your right-hand turn. But in my configuration here, I'm looking for a problematic left-hand turn. And I'm gonna say that it's it's the traffic going from south to north, turning left. So they're going from south to north. They're making a left onto the highway to go west. These tend to fill up almost every time. That means that the loop to support them, to turn that left turn into a right turn, is going to go in the upper right quadrant because they will be in the right lane, they'll make the loop, that'll be their left. So I'm gonna add a single loop to this configuration to ease that left-hand turn and uh, hopefully alleviate some, some potential traffic issues. So I started deleting roads and making the best time-lapse ever, but I realized I really wanna explain this verbally. So right now I wanna give you exact kind of measurements for how I'm gonna accomplish this. When measuring out the loop, pick your radius or diameter first. Pick the size of the loop. I'm going to go for a six unit radius. So six units. In city skylines, one unit is eight meters. I'm not going to do the math. Feel free to, you know, knock yourself out on the math. But just to give you an idea of the size of this thing is what I'm doing. Um, so what we want to measure is six units away from the road here. Away from the crossing road. And we're gonna go the diameter, so 12 units up to here. And that gives us kind of an anchor point with which to measure this. So now I'm gonna go six units over using precision engineering. That's the mod that shows the unit length. Six units, yep, that all checks out. And that is the kind of the end of the loop or the uh, the quadrant furthest from the center of the interchange is represented there. Now, the way that I do this is kind of special. Your gut is going to say, oh, okay, six unit, six units down, six units over. That's going to be, that's going to come out awesome. Oh, uh, well, the problem is the textures overlap. This happens pretty consistently. So what I actually recommend doing is making that curve one unit gentler. Freeform road tool off the end here. And we're actually going to go... Instead of six units to that point, we're going to go five units just like that. And you can do the same thing on the upper side here. So the square is there for six units. I'm going to go back by one if it'll let me. It's not going to. It doesn't matter. I can just manipulate this by um, kind of redrawing it maybe. I swear it was going to be a great time lapse. I promise it would have been, would have been amazing. But now you're getting the whole explanation because you deserve it. Cool. So same thing on this side, grounded though, and we'll go five units instead of six units. And that makes for kind of a nice gentle, um, a gentle entrance and exit to the loop. This side kind of got massacred, but that's okay. If it looks weird, you can always use node controller to kind of restore it 
to um, to a good point. Node controller being another mod, and there you go. Let me uh, let me dress this up a little bit. That's the meat of it. That's the the meat of how I measure out a loop on my interchanges. Uh, but let me let me get the other ramps in too. And there you have it. I think it came out pretty good overall. You can see I uh, this right turn just kind of follows that that exterior bit of the loop there that we made. So that's the same shape, just following it and using the same trick on both sides. Pretty simple. This quadrant just winds up being needed for a right turn, so that's totally free flowing. And I know this looks kind of complex in here, but really it's not. It's all um, this is all totally free flowing. There is no left turn conflict happening anywhere so this does not require a light at all which means all of the conflict has been moved to here at the cost of some space due to the 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 spatial needs of the loop but the light here is the same thing so it's a three phase uh, three phase light one phase for through traffic on both sides one phase in a moment for left turning traffic that's looking to go we'll say east on the highway here. So there's that second phase. And then the third phase is this traffic coming from the highway looking to go north on the arterial. Uh, the, what's really changed here, as mentioned earlier, is that this left turning traffic can now freely flow onto the highway. As long as your lane math is good, it's all free flowing and they'll, they'll have to merge, but that's okay, merging happens. Uh, but yeah, I endorse this overall. This is really good. I, I'd like to see more of this. I'd like to see more interchanges as a journey. So you start with the least amount of force necessary, the least, the smallest interchange using the least resources for your beginning rural area. And then, or, you know, suburban area, that's fine. But then as the needs ramp up, so too must your methods. So this would be kind of an adjacent step to the pre previous video. So in the previous video, we went for a diamond interchange and then we turned it into a diverging diamond and then we turned it into a spooey, a single point urban inter interchange. And that's one branch that you can choose to take. This would be kind of another more space consuming, but visually interesting uh, branch to take is you add a loop, modify the, modify the existing infrastructure, add a loop and see how that affects your traffic as it grows. The, uh, the clever among you might have also noticed, remember the partial cloverleaf I showed you earlier? This is technically a partial cloverleaf. It's a single quadrant partial cloverleaf, but a partial cloverleaf nonetheless. But if you were to mirror the work that I've done on the right side, if you were to mirror this heart shape here, this half a heart, flip it, sorry, not mirror, but rotate it and put do the same loop, but in this quadrant, which means there would be a right turn over here, that is the quintessential partial cloverleaf. So this is a, a partial partial cloverleaf. It's still just a anything less than a full clover in my book is a partial cloverleaf if it contains a loop. Uh, this is just a, a single loop partial cloverleaf, but it is one step on a potential journey of building up your city and modifying things to accommodate for the, the traffic needs that you've created. And I think that that's, that could be a fun way to play the game, is to let things evolve as you go and let interchanges be a part of that and part of your problem solving and part of the story of your city. That is all I've got for today. Everyone, thank you for hanging out. I've been Yumble. I'll see you in the next stream or the next video. Bye.